Our next guest is a Fortean, and we'll find out exactly what that is from him. He is also the editor-in-chief of Pursuit Magazine. Welcome, please, John Keel. John, how are you? So you're a Fortean, eh? Oh, well, I've been trying to outgrow it. Actually, uh, What is a Fortean? Chad, it's spelled F-O-R-T-E-A-N. What is that? Uh, back in the early part of the century, there was a man named Charles Fort who spent his entire life in the New York Public Library, mm -hmm. going through the old scientific journals and old newspapers. And he published a series of books about strange things that turned up in these old journals, like uh, when it would rain frogs in France or red snow in Switzerland. He kept track of all these things, did a series of books, and we started calling these events 14 events. I see. And today we still keep track. Now, the two examples you cited there, I have, uh, I've heard of the raining the frogs, and, it, and it's always a matter of, it's either one an old wives' tale. Uh, remember the time it rained wives' tales? <laughs> yes. um, uh, or it's uh, disputed in some, they could just say, well, there were frogs in the trees. When it rained, they jumped out. <coughs> Well, we have compiled a list of several thousand mysterious things that have fallen from the sky. They uh, documented things. They include things like stone pillars, cannonballs, uh, all kinds of strange things. In China, it once rained raw meat. No, and no. There, there's no explanation. When, for when in China did it rain raw meat? Well, quite a while ago. It was in the 19th century. Now, how is but it that all the unexplained things took place in the 19th century oh, or before? Oh, they're still taking place. Give me a recent unexplained all thing, right, other uh, than Amazing Al. Every, <laughs> every January and February, here in the Northeast, we have what we call skyquakes. They get into the papers sometimes. Now, recently, they've been blaming the Concord for this. But this has been going on. We've been keeping track of this since uh, about 1840. What is a skyquake? It's an explosion in the sky. We have no explanation for it. We've got a lot of pseudo explanations. Well, how do we know when we hear one or see one? Because it's like when a jet, a jet plane passes over at, uh, you know, uh, Mach 2. It's like uh, breaking the sound barrier. It's an explosion that shatters, sometimes shatters windows and so on. And uh, this has been going on in, in Connecticut, for example. The Indians had legends about this going way back. So this has been going on for a very long time, but every time it happens, the scientists come up with a new far-fetched explanation for it. What is the, um, the most common or, or, or daily unexplained occurrence? I mean, something that we would all say, yeah, that's that thing, we can't explain it. What? Well, we don't necessarily have daily occurrences, but uh, in recent years, we, the UFO phenomenon has been very common around the world. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's going on in Argentina. And uh, while a lot of people think they have an explanation for it, uh, actually, we're just beginning to find out uh, what's really going on with the UFO phenomenon. UFOs are, are pretty much, I would guess, if we asked the audience, I, we'd probably find over half of them said, yeah, they have reason to believe there's something going on out there, I think. At, at least 10% of them have probably seen one themselves. Has anybody here ever seen one of these things? People applaud if you've seen one. Yeah. Um, and, and how many of you think there may be something visiting us? What other things uh, fall into the category of unexplained phenomena? Well, we have mysterious animals that turn up all over the world. Like what? Here in the United States, uh, every year or two, we have kangaroos uh, jumping around Illinois, Connecticut, various parts of the United States. We know there are no kangaroos here. The police go out and chase them, shoot at them. They disappear, we never... So what is, your, what is your theory? Where do you think they're coming from? The same place that the dinosaurs are coming from, because we have dinosaurs turning up every uh, couple of years. Uh, about 10 years ago in Italy, the uh, Italian army turned out to chase a dinosaur in the mountains of it northern Italy. And uh, they leave dinosaur footprints, and that's the end of them. They, they can't find any, where, they, uh, where they've been, <laughs> where they've gone. Um, uh, we've, we've got better monsters than that. We've got our sea serpents which we have several lakes in the United States that have sea serpents, not just Loch Ness. And well, where is a, a serpent in this country? A Lake Champlain in New York State. Really? What H is up Henry there? Henry Hudson, who was the first to go up there, reported seeing Henry Hudson and his crew saw a sea serpent in Lake Champlain, and every year somebody sees it up there. And nobody has yet organized an expedition to go up there and really look into it. Well, what's Instead, they organize drive up there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go up there next week. We'll take week the Italian Army with us. We'll get those boys. And uh, um, have we ever photographed this sea serpent? 
Well, the one in Loch Ness has been photographed any number of times. Yeah. Now, movies have been made of it. Uh, and the movies have been examined by the RAF and other specialists, and they're obviously some kind of large animal that's living in Loch Ness. Now, this, uh, what do we have here? This, uh, this is a plaster cast of a, of a big footprint. Now, you've all heard of the abominable snowman in the Himalayas. Uh, we have in the United States, we have a creature that's variously called Sasquatch or Bigfoot. And he's found not just in Washington and Oregon, but he's found all over the United States, especially in the Mississippi Valley, and even in New Jersey. We have quite a lot of reports out of New Jersey, and that's where this footprint comes from. This is from, to you, from Uncle Lou and Bob. <laughs> that's what it says here. <laughs> there are two Fortians in uh, New Jersey. Now, this, made, uh, this is an authentic footprint. Did you make the cast? No, they, they did. They're, they, they're well-known Fortians. Uh -huh. Bob is an airlines pilot, and Uncle Lou is a... a dental surgeon in New Jersey, and they're, they're very active. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. It just sounds well, funny. Uh, dental uh, surgeons make good casts. <laughs> uh, what, how big would this guy be based on this foot? He would be about 800 pounds, probably uh, eight or nine feet tall. Mm. And that's what the witnesses are always describing, incredible as it is. And in, of course, the Himalayas, the abominable snowman, uh, now that, I, I think, uh, that uh, we believe in, or at least I do. To me, it seems like, sure, it's possible that something left over that survived the Ice Age or didn't survive there or something, you know, that there may be a missing link and so on and so forth. Some of this other stuff, like the red snow, what, what was the red snow? Well, the usual scientific explanation for that is that the uh, sands of the Sahara are somehow drawn into clouds and... Uh, drop in Switzerland. Now, I can believe that. Except there are no red sands in, in the Sahara Desert. And I've well, spent what if part the, of my life on the what Sahara. What if the sand went up and was somehow oxidized or and turned red? Isn't that well, a possibility? Well, they, they've made various chemical analysis of this kind of snow. We've had black snow, too. Had yellow and snow. I'm yeah, familiar with that. Snow. <laughs> I think we were all waiting for that one, weren't we? Yes. Um, uh, the, we, we just don't know what what really causes this phenomenon. Uh, the, the sand explanation doesn't work. Is there one in particular that keeps you awake at night, that just gnaws at you? Well, there's some frightening things going on, yeah. Like what? Uh, what the, are we scared of here? The animal mutilations that have been going on around the country, uh, especially uh, out west in recent years. But they're also going on in Brazil and France and Australia and Switzerland, Sweden. And these are not pranks or sick no. uh, jokes? Th thousands of animals have been slaughtered now by some mysterious group. Uh, they drain all the blood from the animals. And uh, they also perform expert operations on the animals, removing certain organs. And uh, veterinarians who have examined these animals say they can't duplicate the operations. That's amazing. I would also like to know why cab drivers in the city don't speak English, but we'll never figure that one out. Uh, we have to pause. Mr. John Keel, accordion, ladies and gentlemen. Edwin Newman.